a detailed breakdown of why the youngsters were benched in LA and why the Warriors game was better than the Clippers game. However, one note, this is a man's league and we don't have men yet. Unless, of course, Don Staley should be your head coach and then it's not the men's league, then it's Don Staley's league. Who knows? It's all next on Locked on Jazz. You are Locked on Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. How are you? I'm David Locke, radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider, and this is Locked On Jazz, your daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. On today's show, we'll look back at Friday against the LA Clippers where Will Hardy benches Keontae George, Taylor Hendricks, and Bryce Sense about six minutes into the game, does not bring them back until midway through the third, and t- hear what Will Hardy said about why. I went back and watched those six minutes, then talked to Will Hardy about why, and we'll break all that down for you and why the Warriors game was a better performance for the Utah Jazz Then, it's a grown man's league. Oh boy, was that evident last night if you watched the league. Ron and I watched a ton on the plane last night. We don't have grown men. And Zion Williamson is on a different planet right now. We'll talk about that as we do a league round watch-up of late stuff. And then, I am curious about that kind of comment. It is a man's league because only men play. But there's a woman who won a national championship game who I covered in the WNBA for a long time. Probably should be a head coach in the NBA if she wants to be in Don Staley. At least that's where I would start if I was someone. If I was Charlotte, I think that's exactly where I would go. We'll touch on all those things before we're done today. It's going to be a fun one here on Locked on Jazz. As I mentioned, I'm David Locke. I'm the radio voice of the Utah Jazz, Jazz NBA insider. This is Locked on Jazz. It's a daily podcast on the Utah Jazz. Give you insight, expertise, geeky numbers, and hopefully making it way better to be a Jazz fan each and every day. Thank you so much for, one, sticking with the show on a daily basis and making it a part of your routine and making it your first listen each and every day, even if we're in the midst of a 12-game losing streak. And thank you for being an everydayer as well. Those of you are the people who make this show go. We are free and available on all podcasting apps as well as on YouTube. If you're driving around, make sure you're listening to Locked on Jazz every day. Thank you so much for tuning into the program. Today's show is brought to you by Prize Picks. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code lock, all lowercase locked on NBA for your first deposit match up to $100. All right. So the first thing, and let's kind of go back and forth. I'm going to go around about here. So I watched, Ron and I had a basketball extravaganza on the plane flight home last night um, until we both dozed off at some point. So we watched the end of Dallas Houston. We watched the end of Knicks Bucks. We watched the fourth quarter of Suns um, Pelicans, and we watched the end of Clippers Cavs. If you watched basketball last night in the NBA, the number one thing that was obvious was, and I, I this particularly after such a great night yesterday sounds a little sexist. I don't mean it this way. It's a man's league. It's not a young man's league. It's not a teenager league. It's a man's league, and. The big boys last night were sick and unbelievable and awesome and dominating and from one performance to the next. And we just don't have anything close to that. And it's kind of torture on them and probably us as a fan base to like be looking at our guys and asking for that. Like it was just so obvious. So that's the first thing. As we look at this, literally what we're asking out of Keontae George and Taylor Hendrick and Bryce Sensabaugh is just impossible. Impossible. It's why we've lost 12 straight. It's why we're blown out in every first quarter. You still have to ask it from them. You still have to demand it from them. You still have to try to get them to understand what it's going to take one day. You still have to build the habits, and that's what Will Hardy's trying to do. But let's just make sure we understand. We Like, Will Hardy can be a little less understanding because he can demand it. But when we're talking about our guys, and whether you're evaluating what you think of Bryce Sensabaugh every day or Taylor Hendricks or Keontae George. Holy smokes. Like the performances last night by Kyrie Irving, Paul George, Luka Doncic, uh, Jalen Brunson. Who am I missing? Um, Oh, nobody was better than Zion last night. Nobody. Oh my gosh. Ron and I decided that was the seven most dominating minutes of basketball we watched by any individual player all year his final seven minutes last night in Phoenix. 
So just understand that. We've got to keep that lens on. Like I keep saying, I wish I could take every moment I've seen Keontae play without Lowry Markin and erase it from my memory. It's just not fair. Now, let's get to what Will Hardy was doing and why when he benched the three guys in L.A. And we made, he was asked after the game by Thurl. And thanks to Thurl and Craig because they did a little extra work this week to, to get those interviews done. Um, he asked about the habits. And his point was, they're the habits that seem unimportant. They're about spacing correctly, sprinting the floor, crashing the glass at the right time, cutting when you're supposed to scudding, cut, sprinting back on defense, sprinting on offense was first, communicating your defense, being physical, playing hard. It's not about making and missing. It's about doing the things that are a member of a winning group, said Will Hardy. So you and I are watching largely based on did the ball go in the hoop? Does he make a play? Does Taylor do something spectacular covering up on a block? Does Bryce Sensible go into his bag and score? Does Keontae make some shots? Like that's what we're watching. And Will's watching, are you spaced correctly? And when I watched, I then went and rewatched after I was done with this, I then went and watched six minutes, the first six minutes where we went down 24 to four against the Clippers and to see if I could see it. And honestly, it wasn't abundantly obvious. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, he didn't run there. Oh my gosh, he didn't do this there. And so because I didn't, couldn't quite see it, I then texted some people who know more than I do and then asked Will Hardy in the press conference. Hey, like, what was I supposed to see? I went back and rewatched it twice. What, what was I supposed to see? So let's go back to what Will talked about the first time. He's talking about spacing correctly. Did I see that? Yeah, you know what? There were times where we just were a little sloppy with our spacing, not getting all the way to the corner, not spacing all the way up to the top, not standing still rather than sliding as Colin Sexton drives. Do you slide to make yourself available for an outlet pass? Were we crashing the glass? We've kind of stopped crashing the glass just in general. Do we, are we, you know, is, are we cutting? No, there was a lot of standing still. Our system is that if you're in the high quadrant, I think you're supposed to cut. Are you sprinting back on defense? We're not been great about that all the time. We are being beat in transition. We allow the most transition points of anyone. The NBA teams are in transition. Two percentage percent of possessions more against us than anyone else in the NBA. Are you communicating on defense? Hard to tell. Are you physical on defense? This is the one that jumped out to me the absolute most. And this is the one thing that I did see when I watched the six minutes against the Clippers. We're never touching anyone. We never impede anyone's route. Now, like on that night, like Bryce Sensabaugh, or, you know, someone's guarding James Harden, someone else guarding Paul George, and luckily Kawhi didn't play. Maybe it's intimidating and wild. It's... It's hard. There's a bunch of plays in which Taylor Hendricks gets beat by Paul George where Taylor Hendricks is shifted in like he's supposed to, seemingly, like that, and I asked Will about this, we'll have this for you in a second, where he's shifted in and then Paul George starts his route to come off two picks to catch the free throw. Well, Taylor's so far behind at this point, he's got no chance. So what's he supposed to do? Like if he's supposed to shift, but he's guarding Paul George, like what's he supposed to do? Super hard. So Will's point is sprint, crash, space, cut, sprint back on defense, communicate, be physical, play hard, be a member of a winning group, play snippets of the game with a desire and a pizzazz to win, not just to be out there. If you'd listen to my interviews last week on on 97.5 The Zone, I, I kind of was saying like, I want to see more. I want to see an impact. These guys had gotten a little... Ca- not casual, but a little, they just were kind of out there. So I, as I said, I went back and rewatched. I didn't have it obvious. So then the next, before the Warriors game, I went and asked Will specifically offensive and defensively. I've got that for you next. And the Warriors game was a much better performance, thankfully, than the Clippers game. So we'll talk about that coming up as we continue on today's edition 
of Locked on Jazz. Today's show is brought to you by Murdoch Chevy, located in Woods Cross and in Logan. The Chevy lineup of trucks, well, it's the Colorado and the Silverado, and there's nothing more Americana than Chevy, and there's nothing better than a Chevy truck. It's just simply built better, made better, has Chevy. Chevy. And the Silverado is the lazy boy chair sitting up top of the world just cruising, and the Colorado's the smaller, versatile truck that you have there. Plus, you got the SUV lineup that leads off with the Utah County Assault Vehicles, with the Subaru, with the Suburban and the Tahoe, and then you work it down to the Blazer, the Trailblazer, the Equinox. They're all in the tracks. Absolutely fabulous lineup over at Chevy. And if you're going to join us, Murdoch Chevy is the place for you in Woods Cross, right off the freeway or in Logan. If you're going to stop by, feel free to email me first at dlock09 at gmail.com. We'll make sure you get your VIP treatment that you deserve over at Murdoch Chevy. Located in Woods Cross and Linda, email me at dlock, or excuse me, and Logan, dlock09 at gmail.com. The Murdochs, over 80 years in Utah, Chevy, Americana, it's the perfect match. Murdoch Chevy. Today's show is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Get your first deposit match up to $100 at prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Why Prize Picks? It's the number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's easy and the most exciting way to get into the action. You pick more or less on two or more players and watch the winnings roll in. March is over, but the biggest moments in college basketball tipped off here early in April. Hopefully you were a part of it. Now it is time for you to get in on more of the fun with the NBA playoffs starting April 20th. Play in round is the 16th, 17th, and 19th. And you can win up to $100 in your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. So turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, all the rest. They're in America's number one fantasy sports app. Go to Locked go to download the app today. Use the code Locked on NBA for your first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Locked on NBA. Thanks so much for making Locked on Jazz your first listen of the day. It's time for you to make the switch. Have you made the switch to Locked on Sports Today, the 24-7 streaming channel that's available for you either on Amazon Fire TV or on the YouTube? It is the local experts of all the biggest stories, probably a little Arkansas today, probably a little Kentucky today, Probably some South Carolina today, probably some Iowa today. Get the local experts giving you the biggest stories, plus all of our national shows, one after another. They're not screaming. They're not yelling at you. They're giving you the local experts that nobody else can give you. It's locked on sports today. Make the switch. All right. So let's go to um, the... It's pretty cool, by the way. I just went to Amazon Fire TV, and the number one trending show is Locked on Gamecocks. So fun to watch us do this. Um, the So here's what Will said. I went basically to the press conference the next day. I said, hey, I watched six minutes. It wasn't obvious to me. He says, so offensively, we weren't getting greedy. We were settling into floaters. There are shots that present themselves when the other team is giving almost on purpose. And you have to f- go past that. And you have we have to have multiple actions. We need to be play with force offensively. So we played with no force offensively. Walked it up the floor against the Clippers. Did not get into multiple actions. Colin would drive, throw up his floater. Keontae would r- drive on the right side, throw up his shot. There was no multiple actions. There was no ball movement. They were absolutely falling into the trap of taking exactly what the Clippers wanted to do. Last night was totally different. Played with pace. Played with tempo. Play, moved the basketball. Opening possession of the game. All five guys touched the ball. Taylor Hendricks ends it with a corner three. Much different basketball last night. Much improved basketball last night. Saw that the pace was most noticeable. We played. We were on pace for 20. We played 29 possessions in the first quarter last night, what league average is a little under 25. The average game has 99 possessions on each side right now. So to play at 28, 29, you're on pace to play about 16 extra possessions. That's almost 20% faster than a regular game. So that's a huge, huge kind of step right there for, for the, the way they want to play. Ron is talked about a lot. There's just a lot of walking the ball up. Now this kind of goes back to something that will said before the Atlanta game that the young players are trying to just survive. 
that young players out there are just trying to survive what they're doing and they don't have, they're not thinking very well. So Keontae bringing the ball, it might be just thinking, okay, I got to get in the play, right. I got to get in the play, right. And, um, and so you see that suddenly we're walking it up. We're not playing with any pace or any energy. They had sense about initiating a little bit more last night in some of the, in some of the moments of the game. Um, last night. And so I think that helped the pace and the force offensively. So we at least played with a little force offensively last night, which was great. Our offense has was, was scuffling as the night went on. Um, and our defense actually got better as the night went on. There were, there were a lot of positives last night. I mean, the defense to start the game still was not good last night. I think it was, a, if I look it up, I think I'm correct that it was 150 for an offensive rating for the Warriors last night in the first quarter, which is, you know, they're scoring our first quarter defense is, has just been truly abysmal on a nightly basis. So they were a 152 in the first quarter. We tightened it up in the second um, with a 112 defensive rating in the second quarter, which is really good against the Warriors in the third quarter. I think we were at 126, which isn't great in the fourth quarter. We tighten it back up down to a 95.5. So you see some progress there in each of those quarters. Um, obviously when the game's 20, they're not, you know, it's not quite as much um, focused as it would be. Um, and the defense was best last night for the three youngsters. I mean, so I don't know if that's, you know, I'm not sure I totally buy defensive rating by night, but it's worth knowing that Taylor Bryce and Keontae had the best defensive ratings last night. So on the defensive game, I thought this was fascinating because the number one thing I'm watching is we're just not inhibiting anyone's actions, routes. No, every, you know, you listen to the other team's commentators every game, like, oh, we can get whatever we want. And that it, Hey, we just run our plays. You don't see us blowing up anyone's plays. You don't see us blowing up a route, change what we're doing. We're not forcing a great deal of turnovers. So, you know, there, there's reason, like we, we're short on talent, which this isn't a criticism. This is a factual statement of what I'm, what we're seeing on the floor. And this is where Will was really interesting. He's like, this is about reading the game. Well, Okay, so first thing is the minute Reed Will says this is about reading the game, the difficulty in lies here that you have guys who just haven't played enough games to read it. And so this is where they're just learning. Um, but right now he says, hey, like we're letter of the law, you're supposed to be shifted over in ready, da, 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 but you got to read the ball handler and see what's going on. And maybe your def maybe your guy has him squared up correctly. And then then you got to go, maybe you shift over and get close to being your guy. This goes back to the play I was talking about where where Taylor Hendricks guarding Paul George and they're not in Paul. He's not in contact with him when the play starts. And so when at that point, all he, he's kind of dead to rights before it happens, Paul George starts. And we saw it last night with clay clay was just getting free because whoever had the matchup on clay was not in contact with him when the play started. And so therefore he's popping out free and you've, the Jazz did a better job in the second half. Like Scott Morrison said to us at halftime, the, the game plan is to make him a driver. But so it's to make him a driver and at the same time to have him, if you're one level, you're making him a driver. On the other level, you're trying to shift over off of him when the ball's on the other side and then he takes off, particularly against the Warriors. That's a very difficult, very, very difficult task at hand. So a lot of this just takes experience. And, you know, Will said it. We're just literal right now. We're not making reads. So they go through shoot around and they, they're literal and they kind of go to their spots. And then next thing you know, he's, you know, it's the guys on the route. I, I get it. We, we've got to find a way to physically have some impact defensively. Our turnovers were 25th in forcing turnovers or allowing we're the worst team defensively against the shot since the all-star break. Like I got it, but we you know, hey, we're three, we've only won three games. The next closest is six. We're going to be last in some categories. But the, I think what you're, what you're looking to see here is whether or not we can start to have some impact on teams' routes and uh, physically playing defense and getting into people and having them feel us. And no one's really feeling us um, right now. On the other end, we're outmatched at almost every position. And so I think there's a little bit, of trying to hold on in the sense of like, Hey, if I get up too tight on this guy, he's going to go back door. We got beat back door in like five or six times last night, which, you know, Hey, correct body position. You don't get beat, but that also might be a case. Like I'm, I'm trying to overplay. I'm trying to be ready and I get beat. It's super hard. And nothing made it more obvious to me how hard this league is than watching a bunch of games last night. And we'll touch on that. And if you're the Charlotte Hornets, do you hire Don Staley? 
Just a thought. We'll talk about it as we continue here on Locked on Jazz. Today's edition of Locked on Jazz is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn, small businesses. Thank you, LinkedIn, for existing. Oh, my gosh. It's not just another job board. LinkedIn is a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn does all this while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time and resources to hire. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. They even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making that process easier. Thank goodness, because writing job descriptions is brutal. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free at LinkedIn. Locked on Sports Today right now has John Neighbors of Locked on Razorbacks on. I want to watch it. Ah! It's on on my Amazon Fire. I want to watch it. All right. So I covered Don Staley in the WNBA when she played for the Charlotte Sting. I do not think that I covered a player who played harder, was tougher, and more fierce than Don Staley. Um, She and Tisha Penichero were probably my two favorite post-game interviews. Tisha played for the Sacramento Monarchs. Um, Don was just a badass. I don't have any other way to say it. Five, six toughest and just a total badass um and just was gonna will you to wins and rip your heart out and she is now clearly an unbelievable coach becky hammond's the name everyone talks about um i don't know why but for whatever reason the becky hammond thing hasn't rung true to me other than she was kind of preordained by pop and now is playing down this road and she's gone and won the title with the Las Vegas Aces and she's clearly a really good coach. She's done, a, you know, they won a title. Like you can't, def- not. for whatever reason, I'll just tell you, like I, I don't have any good answer. It hasn't rung true. Don Staley rings true to me. Don Staley is the coach that I've, from no, and this is largely from knowing her as a player. I think if you'd asked me like 10 years ago when Don Staley was in the WNBA and maybe it was more than 10 years ago because it was probably 2006, it was probably like 18 years ago. If, um, I would have, and you asked me which WNBA player could ever coach in the NBA, I think I would probably have started with Don Staley. Um, it's kind of obvious who she is and what a leader she's been, and everyone just followed in line to her for all of all of her career. Uh, so I'm serious. If I She played with the Charlotte Sting, so she has a Charlotte tie. Not that that's important. But if I was, if I was the Charlotte Hornets' new ownership, now that's hard. I, I would take the run. The answer... Well, she doesn't know the NBA. Yeah, nor did Billy Donovan when he went to the Thunder. Nor did Quinn Snyder, other than he'd done some G League stuff, so he'd have that experience. So I guess that's not fair. Quinn Snyder had done the G League, had done the European, had done the clip assistant coach. That's not fair. Nor did Brad Stevens. Quinn Snyder was a bad example. Nor did Brad Stevens. We've done this before. It's failed and worked. Um, sorry, I'm just about to get it was about to get on one of my hot buttons about society right now. And I'm deciding not to probably. Though I would say, like, the thing we have to be careful here on Don Staley to Charlotte is if she goes to Charlotte, she has to have NBA experience. Then they'll say, well, that's a failure. That doesn't work. Can't do that. Like the same way we've done it 12 times with men and it hasn't worked. This is kind of what we do right now is when someone hires a, never mind. Um, it's not the place. Um, but if anybody wants those thoughts, they can email me. I'll share them with them. Um, so anyway, I just think Don Staley has got it. I've always have. Like, this is not a new thought. This is a 15-year-old thought. And the world's ready. And I think our NBA players are ready. So if I was Charlotte, I would seriously, seriously consider this. I think it's like, if I was, you know, one of the college programs that have an open job, I would seriously consider it also. I I don't know why she takes a college men's job instead of South Carolina women, though. I I just don't think she would. I, I wouldn't if I were her. All right, NBA last night was incredible. 
Um, let me run through it. Ron and I watched a bunch last night. There are no games today, by the way, which is so weird. So Dallas, Houston, Dante Exum hits a massive three. Luca gives it up to him in to force overtime, which was kind of awesome. Um, and ties at 128. And then Kyrie just goes bananas. Kyrie scores the first six of the first eight points in overtime, eight of the first 12 points in overtime. PJ Washington scores a few to close it out. And Kyrie was just ridiculous. And Kyrie finished with 48. Luca had 37. Like you just, that's what it takes. And Kyrie's just making plays. These are just plays. I don't even know if they were assisted. Like, I'm trying to think back. I don't think any of them were assisted. They're just a guy making plays. Um, then we watched Clippers Cleveland and Cleveland lets this one get away, but really Paul George just grabs it. Paul George had 39, 11 and seven. And I think had, I'd have to check, but I think he had like 18 in the fourth quarter. Like just ridiculous performance, man. Like this is what it takes. Like, if you're going to, like, you're going to win games this time of year against good teams. Paul George had 23 points in the fourth quarter last night. 23! He went 6 of 10 for the field, 2 of 4 from 9 of 9 for the line. He had 5 rebounds, 2 assists. He was just a beast. Darius Garland was doing the best he could, but, like, Cleveland couldn't. Cleveland went 7 of 21. They didn't have this. Like, that's what they didn't have this. Uh, we did not get to Indiana, Miami. We watched the end of Nick's box. Cause I want to see what was possibly wrong with the box. They're not passing the basketball at all. But in the midst of that, Jalen Brunson was ridiculous. So was a bunch of guys. Dante DiVincenzo had 12 points in the fourth quarter, but three assists from Jalen Brunson where they're double teaming Jalen Brunson. Cause they simply can't guard him one-on-one. -on -one. And then Dante DiVincenzo goes four or four from three. Like he's not a, Roman man the same way we're talking about the rest of them, but he's got to make plays. Giannis couldn't. Giannis was one of four. Dame was one of three. They do not pass. They do not pass the basketball. If they do pass the basketball, it's one pass to Bobby Portis for a shot. And then the most dominating performance I have seen all season was Zion Williamson last night. Zion Williamson last night if this is what he is, oh my gosh, and he hit a pull-up jumper. His fourth quarter last night, he had 12 points. Okay, we all know he can do it. His defense, he guarded Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant last night. And he had three block shots that were ridiculous. If you care, go to the NBA box score, get the three block shots in the fourth quarter. You can go to go to their box score, click on traditional, go to fourth quarter, he'll have three blocks, click on them. They're crazy. They're all trail blocks. They're all like guarding Bradley Beal, Kevin Durant. They drive to the basket. He comes from behind and swats it off the glass. But Zion, and then Zion hits a pull-up jumper and he drives the basket. I mean, he was a beast at just such an insane level. Grayson Allen couldn't hit anything, which is actually, interestingly enough, for all this talent, the key to Phoenix. The other one is that, Kevin Durant had another bad closing game. And at some point, this is a bigger story than anyone wants to talk about. But Kevin Durant has been bad in the clutch for like three straight years. Bradley Beal was awesome. He had 15. But like you finish watching us play back-to-back -back games and then sit on the plane and watch these guys. And that's the level. And the, that level is totally different. It's 30 years old. It's mature. It's incomplete control. It's playing with force. It's absolutely varsity versus junior varsity. It's 30 versus 20. And it was pretty eye-opening. But man, was Zion Williamson something else last night. Holy smokes. Not sure. I really think that was the most dominating eight minutes of basketball that I've seen out of anyone all season. I'm sure there's somebody on the 70-point game that was... But that was awesome. All right, that is Locked on Jazz today. We'll be back with you tomorrow. No games tonight in the NBA for the national championship game. I don't care about the national championship game. I want NBA games. 
All right. I uh, hope you enjoy the national championship game. We got 14 the next night, including the Jazz. Home against Denver, who will be playing all their guys because the race in the Western Conference is nuts. Minnesota and Denver are tied. Oklahoma City is a game back. Clippers with a big win last night against Cleveland. Yesterday afternoon against Cleveland, get their 50th win. Also probably secure four. And Dallas with that monster come from behind. Dante Exum three, probably secure five. Phoenix and New Orleans was a monster game because New Orleans beating Phoenix. Now they are tied for 6-7. Sacramento moved to a half game up as LeBron did not play, and Anthony Davis left with an injury, eye injury last night. Warriors are pretty well set into a 10th and probably going to hold there. On the Eastern Conference, there's nuttiness going on because Cleveland is suddenly does not have home court advantage. Um, we'll see. All right, that is Locked on Jazz. Time now to send you over to the first ever 24-7 national sports channel. It's called Locked on Sports Today. You can grab it on Amazon Fire TV, or you can grab it on YouTube. Make the switch to Locked on Sports Today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Greatly appreciate you.